After you obey God, then he releases you to go and share the word. Those, God will put greatness in us, and it is greatness that's in you and I. That greatness in us, but you have to deny the fact that it's not you. Because if you start to claim in God's glory for the positions that he puts you in, for the things that you need to accomplish, you're in trouble. Now I want you to remember this. Meditation, visualization, and personalization. That's what the bishop tells us every time he ends the sermon. He said, find the scripture, own that scripture, MVP. Meditation, visualization, you got to see it happening. That's in faith. And personalization, you got to count yourself guilty. Our living principles. The living principles are what we believe, and that is God in God. Believe, we must see the favor of God. We must hear God all the time. After you get all of those principles down to where it's just natural, it's just happening every time, you know that there's something that God tells you that you have to obey. In today's sermon, from the Church of the Living God Temple 208, we have our very own assistant pastor, Billy Dowdy, who loves to bring you the Word of God in a teaching mode. So get your pen and paper and sit back and enjoy. I'm just happy. Uh, I'll just give you a few words of encouragement. That's what I come by to do. Amen. I don't want to discourage you, but I do want to tell you the truth. Amen. The truth will set you free. Praise God. So I'm just happy to be here, the chairman, and all, all of you that are here. Uh, it's just like the youth saying today, uh, the Lord is blessing us. Yeah. And, uh, that's a wonderful thing. How many really know who Jesus is? Amen. Let me see your hands. Amen. I mean, you really know who Jesus is. You know, like your mom or your dad or something. Yeah. But you really know who Jesus is. Yeah. I mean, because if you don't know who Jesus is, then you could be lied to and deceived. Amen. That's the problem that I come to share with you is the deception that's in the world. And the deception sometimes can look good, can feel good. But if Jesus ain't involved, you better let it alone. <laughs> I, I guarantee you that. That's just not a good gesture. But I guarantee you, you better let it alone. Because uh, how many saved in the house? Let me see your hands. That means that you have made a confession, yes. right? That means you have opened the gates and the doors for Christ to come in, right? Amen. And you didn't just do it uh, just to do it, but you really knew what Jesus did for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. You really know that Jesus stepped in for us to not go or be destructed, or, or just be tore up in life. Yes. Jesus stepped in, right? Yes. And so I just want you to, there's some things that just because you know who Jesus is, you have to remember. We go through many challenges in life, and one thing, when you know who Jesus is, you're going to win. You're going to win every time. If you know who Jesus is, and you got into fellowship with him. Yeah, yeah. If you got into the fellowship with Jesus, it's going to be all right. Say that to yourself silently, loudly, but it's going to be all right. Because yeah, I know who Jesus is. Amen. If you were going up for murder Monday morning and you were guilty, and all the evidence showed that you were guilty, but if you know who Jesus is, you're just not going to end up in a total damnation place. So you just got to know who Jesus is. I just want to hit that in. If you know who Jesus is, then you know who God is. Amen. And you know what God does, right? Yes. And it's so simple what God does, right? Because everybody knew from child up his first Sunday, the children, one of the things that I understood real clear, real clear, crystal, was that God so loved the world. Yeah. 
I just like, when I found that out, whew, I, I began to find out who Jesus was. And after I found out who Jesus was, I knew everything was going to be all right. And so I just want to encourage you of some things you got to remember going through your life and your cycle. You just got to remember these things. You got to remember, and Bishop said this on his last couple of of messages that he gave out. You just got to remember that God is guiding us. That God is always in control. Always in control. Do you understand me? Always. Always in control. I don't care what it looked like. God is always in control. Say, okay, well, he's always in control. Well, sometimes the flesh wants to know a little bit more. Well, how is he always in control? Well, one way he's always in control is he's the truth. And he shares the truth with his children, right? One, another way we do is, is his mercy covers us every day right now, this very moment. Because God is in control, his mercy protect you from getting killed. By a car, maybe. By a gun, maybe. By your health just failing. But God's mercy. I wonder why he gives you that mercy. He gives you that mercy because we are his children. Another thing you have to remember is that God's grace covers us. God's grace, he abides for us. We go home, we can eat, got a place to stay, got some garments to put on, grace of God working in you, got a job or two, got a little money in your pocket, God is allowing you to to receive that. You're working, you receive that, you receive that. That's why you can't forget it. You can't put yourself in the pit and say, ah, you know, this is looking pretty bad for me. But you got to remember that. What we want to do, and, and in the message, uh, what, what we just, if you, if you want to, I'm going to begin a, a series of teaching on walking in the spirit. But I will give you real quick. If you want to be an a MVP in walking in the spirit, Now I want you to remember this. Meditation, visualization, and personalization. That's what the bishop tells us every time he ends the service. He said, find a scripture, own that scripture, MVP. Got it? Meditation, visualization, you got to see it happening. That's in faith. And personalization, you got to count yourself guilty Amen. until God release you from it, until God free you, MVP. You want to be an MVP. I also have to remind you before I go on, remember our living principles. The living principles are what we believe, and that is God in God. Believe. We must see the favor of God. We must hear God all the time. And after you get all those principles down, this is everyday walking in the spirit stuff, walking in the light. After you get all of those principles down to where it's just natural, it's just happening every time, you know that there's something that God tells you that you have to obey. After you obey God, then he releases you to go and share the word. Those five principles always teach you. You got to have those. And even today, the one that I'm really going to push on today is going to be in belief. Okay. The writer, uh, where I'm coming from now, and Jesus said this in John 14 and 12, most assuredly, and we have to understand that God, we are God's children. We, we think in kingdom fashion, and we know that God will allow us to do things beyond what we can do. 
God will put greatness in us, and it is greatness that's in you and I, that greatness in us, but you have to deny the fact that it's not you, even though greatness is in us. You just got to deny that it's not me. Because if you start declaiming God's glory for the positions that he put you in, for the things that you need to accomplish, you're in trouble. Right? And so that's where I said the problem is today is deception. Deceive. I can easily deceive myself and think that I am great. But I can spiritually discern that I am great. Yeah. Yeah. Where I'm going to fall out at, though. It's going to be real. It's going to be, do I really know who Jesus is? I can fake it, though. I can hang out with Jesus for a couple days and stuff like that on Sundays. You know, Jesus is cool. But down through the week, I might know more of me than Jesus. And if I know more of me, you know, it's not good. Not good. You young ones, too. I was young at one time. I know how my mind was thinking. I knew right from wrong. So Jesus said this in John 14 and 12. I say to you, he who believes, that living principle, right? He who believes in me, do you really know Jesus? The works that I do, he will do also. Now that shakes me up right there. Because uh, I'm not stupid enough to compare myself to Jesus. Amen. <laughs> I say, you're going to really have to work with my flesh. I mean, I, I mean, on the flesh side, I'm stupid enough. <laughs> but on the spiritual side, which is where I want to grow, which is where I want to hear every day, which is what I want to walk in, I want to be in the light every day. So what I hear... Now, that's the principle, too. I told you, how in the world are you going to move and walk in light if you can't hear God every day? I'm talking every day. And so, Jesus said this. The works that I do, he will do all, uh, that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these Will, do, will he do because I go to the Father? You see, I'm leaving. And whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be what? Glorified. So that takes me out of the picture right there. And then Jesus said to them, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now I said, wow, that's a lot, that's a lot, that's a lot, that's a lot out there. But then he says this, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor know him, but you know him, for he dwell with you and will be in you now. Now I can come to that. Now I can come to that part of Jesus. Now I can come and say that it's the spirit. He told them when he leave, when I leave, I'm going to send you a comforter. And that comforter is going to come into you. Now do you really know Jesus? And, and we raised our hands and said, yes, we know Jesus. Why? Because we confess. We believe that God raised his son from the dead. We believe that he paid the sacrifices of sin for us. And so we confess. So we know what? That the spirit of God is inside of you and I. And greatness can come out of you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Greatness can come out. And guess what this world is in need of? Some great Christians. Some great believers. Some, some great Godly fearing children here that'll stand in this society today and tell it like it is. Let it come out. You know, I think about Isaiah. Isaiah had a, a hard problem. He had to go and tell the in the 58th verse of I, chapter of Isaiah, he had a hard problem. He had to go and tell the children of Israel, y'all not fasting right. You fasted for things that pertain to your flesh. But he said, what about those that are in need? 
What about those that are surrounded by you who need an out and you don't say nothing? Or you jump in because it's good for you, for your flesh. You don't hear God. Or you hear God and you run. Walking in the spirit, okay? Jesus said this to his disciples in the 8th, 14th, and 18th verse. I will not leave you an orphan, but I'll come to you. Now, if you was with Jesus, and he told you this, at some point, it's truth. And we know what happened with the disciples. They were operating off of truth. Are we totally walking off of truth, we got to check yourself. That's all. Just got to check yourself. Isaiah said this in 58 and 11. In continuing with what we know and what we have and what we understand as believers, we come to this point. And Isaiah says, and the Lord shall guide thee continually. And satisfy thy soul in drought, and make, thy, and make fat thy bones, and thy shall be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose water never fail. You imagine? Someone need a drink of water, and you always got a glass of water for them? Because the fountain never fail. The word of God never fails. That's the water. The word of God have to come to you on your downtime. And in your downtime, the word of God will build you back up. Yeah. So what? So you can continue to walk. Yeah. Imagine all the Christians with their heads down, worried. And we seen that in 2019 or something like that. It, was, it got pretty messy for the Christians, for the believers. Yeah. We were all over the map. We going to die? Got to wear a mask? What's going to happen? All over the place. But truth is going to happen all the time. And every time truth is going to happen. The believer operates off of belief. So John, so John, where I'm citing the word from here, John was an eyewitness, right? We know that. And, and he said, this is the reason, these are the reasons why he wrote what he wrote. He wanted, to, he wanted the, the believers to continue on. Not get messed up by deception. Not get messed up by lies and deceit. But I want to, I want to tell you the truth. Isn't that what we all want to do in this house right now? In the spirit of John? Don't we all want to tell the truth? Is there anybody here want to deceive somebody? So I'm listening to John because John is moving by the spirit of God. John is writing by the spirit of God inside of him. And he says this. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness. We have seen and bear witness. That's what he said. Bear witness. We're talking about eyewitnesses now. And declare to you that the eternal life which was with the Father was and was manifest to us. That we, that, First uh, John, if you want to be with me, First John 1 and 3. Slow down a minute. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with our, the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light. And in light, in him there is no darkness. If we say that we have fellowship with him, we walk if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Amen. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one of another. That's why we can't be messed up with each other. We got to work together to build and to share this gospel, right? Amen. 
And so, so that's what cleanses us up. He says it right here. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us for all sin. So if I did you wrong and you know better and I did you wrong, but the blood of Jesus is going to cleanse me up because that's what he died for. And Christ can put everything back together, can't he? But if you ain't running with Jesus, if you don't know who Jesus is, you're going to stay mad at me. You're going to hold some stuff against me. You're going to say, I should have known better. But see, even you attacking me and saying that I should have known better, I know that the Bible said all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And if you say you don't have no sin, the Bible said that you are lying, the truth is not in you. So go on and attack me or attack whoever and forget that. See what happens. I'm just talking about this writer, John, here, if you allow me a few more minutes. John was making sure that the people understood who they were and what they have. You can't be a believer and not understand who you really are. You can't be a believer and not understand that either I have a good relationship with Jesus or I don't. Either I'm listening to Jesus or I, Jesus, I, whatever. I, I know, Jesus, you're always right, you know, but right now I'm going to be right. I'm going to be right wrong. That's what I'm going to be. Do you really know who Jesus is? So John, John breaks this thing down for me. That's why I'm giving it to you. Let the truth, that's my theme now, let the truth abide in you and continue on. Let the truth Say that with me. Say, let the truth truth. abide in me me. so I can continue on. on. And 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 my fifth principle is to share the gospel. Share that gospel. That's why I want the truth. I want to share the gospel. Now some, Paul said, now some preach, you know, they want that glory. They want the glory of the story. (laughs) You know, you got to be careful there. It's a lot of glory in it, glory. See, you know, you know, the same thing with everything we do. You know, it's like, why am I doing it? I want that glory. That story. I want to sit up there and be like this. Tell me more. Don't stop. Give me some more good stuff. You know, then you forget. And like I said, I told you the problem is being deceived. Got to slap yourself sometime, even though God loves us. So he says this, let the truth abide in you and continue on. First John 2, 20, but you have an anointing. This is from the King James uh, New, but it says unction in the other one. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and here, here it comes. This is this this will get you right here. Get me. I don't know about you. And you know all things. So so you know what the all things is, that gets me is I know when I'm messing up. Amen. I know when I'm wrong. Otherwise, it's okay because I don't have the anointing. It's not on me, so I can act a fool. And you gotta forgive me because you have the anointing. But John. I witness same John on the island of Patmos yeah, yeah. is talking here. Yeah. That's who's talking. And he says, I have not written to you because you do not know the truth. I, I, I can say it like this. I am not standing up here because you do not know the truth. Yeah. We know the truth. So John is writing to the believers And he's telling them these things because of deception. And that no lie is of the truth. We know that. It's common. We know that. You don't even have to be a believer to know that. If it's a lie, it's a lie. It can't be the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus Christ, that's who the liars are in the world, who is, the, who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? 
He is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. John, John just breaking it down. Therefore, let them ab let that abide, let this live. Therefore, let that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, ye also will abide in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us was eternal life. Yeah. That abiding in you. Because yeah. every time there's a, a major challenge or something that happens to me or in my life, or I have to think about something, I still have to realize that I'm eternal. If I go to the doctor and the doctor said, that's it. This is your case. You're done. That's rough. But I'm going to put my mind in motion going the other way. I'm going to put my mind in motion that, yeah, I'm going to leave this, this raggedy place because now it's going to be raggedy. Because the doctor done told me I'm gone. So, so the earth is raggedy at that point. And the visualization, MVP, the visualization or the faith I can see now, that's where I'm going to live at. I don't have no choice to live nowhere else. I'll be running around on this earth. It's like it's over. It's over. You either did it or you didn't. I mean, that's just where we at. But we eternal. The believers are eternal. He just said it there. I'll read it again. And this is the promise that he has promised us. Eternal life. He promised that. That's the truth. That's not deception. That's what Christ, that's why Christ, Christ, Christ when we say Christ, like, and I don't mean it like Christ's name, right? right. The, Christ, the Messiah. Yeah. <laughs> the one who's coming to take care of everything. Yeah. His name was Jesus. But the Messiah, yeah. Yeah. Christ. So is Jesus Christ in your life? Is Jesus Christ in your life? The Messiah. And then he says it right here, like I said it. 1 John 2, 26. These things I have written unto you concerning those who deceive you. But look, and I want you to leave here knowing this one. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, not even me, shucks. Ah, man. Not even me. Okay. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as some but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him that when he appears, you may have confidence and not be ashamed before his coming. Isn't that something? You know, and that, that means you was on it, right? That means you were walking in the spirit. And then it's like, hey, Jesus, oh, man, you know. But, but then there's another scenario that me and Deke talk about. Somebody going to be jumping up and saying, oh, Lord, I healed the sick. He going to say, get away from me. You depart from me. You were doing that work all like I said earlier. You were deceived about the work you was doing. Amen. You ain't gave one person a glass of water. Yes. Remember he told him? He said, when you look after the least of those, but we got too many problems to look after the least. Yes. I can't look after the least. I got my own problem. Yes. Shoot, I'm the least. Can you give me something? Yes. I'm the least. Yes. Come on, help me out. Yes. <laughs> I ain't got time. That man, that man standing out there in that street homeless sleeping on that sidewalk. <laughs> I don't even see him. But you know what the Bible said in Psalms? It says, if you miss seeing the poor, you too going to become poor. All that power up in you, and Jesus done said that how great you are, and the Holy Spirit operating in you, and all you can do is chase. I don't know. So just saying. <laughs> so, so, and then he, we come down to 
this right here, because you know, he said right there to have confidence. I want to have confidence. I don't, I don't want to be shaken. I don't, I don't want to be like Adam, you know, and Eve. I don't, I don't want to have to go and sow fig leaves and do all that stuff. I don't want to do that. I just want a good report. And it wasn't because I was great. It was because the blood of Jesus. I kept on pleading the blood of Jesus because I'm a bad scamp. I'm just a scamp. <laughs> you know, but that blood. Says, hey, God, God said, well, come on up here, scamp. You, you, you my child. I said, I'm your child? I thought the world been telling me I'm a scamp. God is good. Amen. Then he says this, if you know that he is righteous. Now, again, we got, we know, we ain't guessing. That's what the world do. You get, they get those arguments. What One of the big philosophical arguments now in the government is, is does the president have more power than the people? Yeah, they, they, they ain't going to never get that one figured out. But that's, you know, that's, that's, but when we look at it, it says, if you know that he is righteous, we know that Jesus was right. We know that God was right. We know the Holy Spirit was right. We know the word is good. Then he says, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteous is born of him. Woo we born of God. Oh, you know, I got, you know, someone's got to back up off of that. Born of God. But we, we see what happened with the first family with the Jewish nation. They ain't got out of that cycle yet of being the chosen people first. They can't, they can't figure out. It's, sometimes it's everybody. Everybody. Gentiles. Jews. Greeks. Everybody. Black. White. Everybody. If you practice righteousness, you're born of God. <laughs> So I'm about done here. Three things that'll keep you continuing in the spirit. Three things. Three things. What are they? Y'all been listening to me. I'm going to call on you. What are they? I'm going to call on you. I'm getting ready to call you. I ain't going to call you. <laughs> but I want you to take your own exam right now. I want you to think what three things I'm going to say before I say them. Right? Okay. These are the three things that you must continue. I know you're going to agree with me, so I ain't worried about that. Three things that you must continue to do because we, we know who we are. We know what's inside of us. We know who's inside of us. We know what we're supposed to do in our purpose, our goal. God has made us uniquely together. The three things that you need to concentrate and continue on is love the guiding of the Holy Spirit, and truth. Simple, huh? This is what the word said about it. You are God's little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I know you know that one. That's how, but that's what makes you the MVP, remember? Meditation, visualization, and personalization. Now you know Greater is he that is in. That's your practice model. I'll give you practice models up here. You know that now. Great. I'm greater than anything in this world. Amen. Any attack that come upon me in this world. Yes. Paul got to the place where I say this in my uh, uh, spiritual Spiritual actuality, Dennis, spiritual actuality, where you come to a place where you know who God is and God know who you are. Yeah, that's spiritual actualization. That's good. In that spiritual actualization, you understand now. Now, Paul gets to a place of contentment. And he says this. Now that I speak in regards to needs, I have learned in whatsoever state I am to be content. I know how to be obese. I know how to be about. Every, everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. 
both to abound and suffer needs. But in his conclusion, baby, what does he say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So in all his circumstances that happened to him, all that he went through, he's able to come to that conclusion in his spiritual actualization to come to the point to know that even though those things are happening to me, I can do all things. <laughs> so the goal would be, how do I have Christ to strengthen me, right? Three things, remember, and in our beliefs, Three things that help us to continue, I gave it to you. Now your understanding of you coming in too in the visualization now, and, and that visualization, knowing and understanding this, and we do understand and know this next scriptures that I'm gonna read. Whoso, whosoever believes that Jesus is Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. So, you, so, so in that right there, don't ever think you're alone because something happened or somebody left this earth or something happened and you think you're alone. God loves you. And do not disrespect God because longing and can't get yourself going again because something happened to you. John was trying to get them to become overcomers. And he says this. I'll read this again. Whosoever believes that Jesus Christ is born of God and everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. John went on to say this. By this, we know that we we love the children of God and when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome for whosoever is born of God. Now, this is what I came to give you right here. I'm about done. But whosoever, but whosoever, but whoever, who, but whoever, but who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes, you hear that? Believe. He who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. We know that, right? Visualize it, personalize it, become an MVP. The love that I told you, these are the three things that I told you that I was going to leave you with. Love. But whosoever keeps his word, 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 Bible, church, somebody say church. Somebody say Bible. Bible. Say word. word. Whosoever, but whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us, this, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Galatians said, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who are, is true and his, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God of eternal life. 1 John 5 and 20. And believe it or not, my conclusion scriptures... Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Now, this is our work. But test the spirit whether they are of, of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know that the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses Jesus has come 
in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which is here now at work. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God, and he knows, and, and he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us, but this is, by this we know the spirit of truth. That's what I want to close with. By this we know the spirit of truth. And error is on us to correct ourselves. God bless you. We say to you today that if you shall confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised his son from the dead, you shall be saved. At this moment, wherever you are, wherever you see this, if you accept that now, you become a believer and you receive all the goodness of God through faith. God bless you. I thank you for your time. Thank you for these moments that we got to share the word of God with you. Thanks for watching. Be blessed by sharing this message. Support our ministry by following us on all social media platforms like YouTube. Hit the subscribe and like buttons, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Your generous giving allows the church to grow, which supports our efforts in providing the needed services for the community. There are a variety of ways for you to continue your giving. Go to the links in the description below and God bless.